Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can secure your SQL server using Cloudflare and more specifically Cloudflare Zero Trust which allows you to use single sign-on and all of that good stuff to protect your services. Now we are using SQL as the example in this video but this will essentially work for anything using TCP. The only prereq for this is that you already have a Cloudflare tunnel set up on your server. Now I already have a video covering this, so check that out, it'll be in the top right or top left somewhere for you to check out. So just make sure you've got that tunnel set up and I'm gonna walk you through everything else. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm a very visual person, so I like to kind of just explain what's going on. Now, if you're familiar with, if you've watched my other videos for setting up tunnels and uh, self-hosting, say, Nginx web servers and all of that, these are all accessed via HTTP or HTTPS, which means you can just use the web browser, no problem, to connect to these things, and you can expose them just fine. You don't need anything else. You can just use Cloudflare, Zero Trust to expose it, hit the domain name, and you're good to go. Now, when it comes to TCP, it's treated differently, and there's a couple of things we need to set up. We need to have a TCP tunnel configured on our local machine as well not just our server when we're connecting to this TCP service now that's really easy to do and I'm going to walk you through all of this but I've just got a little picture here just so I can kind of help explain what's going to what we're going to do so essentially what you should have configured already is a TCP service that's running on a server somewhere and in my case I have an SQL server that's using TCP port 1433 and it already has a Cloudflare tunnel set up Okay, now the service itself, the SQL server service isn't set up in Cloudflare. I'm going to walk you through that process of setting up a TCP service in Cloudflare. And then I'm going to show you how you can connect to that service using the Cloudflare TCP tunnel that's going to connect back to Cloudflare Zero Trust. And then we're going to then be able to connect to our TCP service. And then on top of that, I'm going to show you how we can also chuck single sign on. So even when we try to connect to our TCP service, uh, which is our SQL server, we'll be prompted for maybe our GitHub authentication or whatever authentication you have set up. And I've also explained how you can do that in my previous video that, uh, that I explained how to set up the tunnel. So again, make sure you check that out because it should help explain a lot more uh, than um, what I'm going to cover here. Let's just jump into it, okay? <laughs> so what I have here is I have, uh, I, I use examples a lot or like scenarios. So in this scenario, let's say I have my SQL server here and I'm not always going to be home, right? I need to be able to connect to this database from any sort of machine, but I don't just want to open, right? It can be t protected by a username or a password for the database itself, but I want the actual whole application, even before someone can even connect using the, the database username and password, just the whole server application protected by Cloudflare single sign-on. And that's what we're going to do. That's the scenario here. How do we do that? Right, so we have our server here. This part here is going to be the same as just setting up any sort of Cloudflare Zero Trust service. So the key thing that we want to know here is what's the IP address of the server running the Docker container and what port are we going to be using? So we can see at the bottom here, the IP address of my server is 192.168.68.109. So make sure we remember that. And the TCP port we're wanting to access is 1433. So that's the port we need to tell Cloudflare, hey, if we're gonna set up a domain and it's going to be this IP address with this port and that should resolve our Docker container running SQL. Okay, so I am in my Cloudflare account now okay so if, again if you follow that previous video this should look familiar to you so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to one make sure you actually have a domain name set up because that's what we're going to need i've got a few here that you can get them for like a couple of dollars on cloudflare if you want to if you need a domain name uh so just make sure you've got one configured in cloudflare that is another prerequisite um but that's essentially it okay once you got your domain name you can use cloudflare so let's go into Zero Trust on the left hand side here. And then what we want to do is go into Access, where we set up our tunnel, and then click Tunnel. And I've got three here, but that's just because I've got three servers doing their little thing. Uh, but Alzim is the one that is running the SQL server. So let's go into Alzim. And in the top right, we're going to hit Configure. Again, this should look familiar to you. Now, under Public Hostname is where we set up our hostname mapping it to the service which is the ip address and the port okay 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a public host name. And we're going to, to create a subdomain. So in this one, let's just call it TikToks SQL. Okay. The domain will be alzen.xyz. There is no additional path. The service, again, if you've been exposing, you know, cool things like WordPress and uh, Nextcloud and all of that, you've been able to use HTTP and HTTPS to expose your services because they use, you know, port 80 and 443. But in this case, we are using a TCP port, so we will select TCP. And the URL, again, it was the IP address of our server and the port that the um, SQL server is running on. So 192.168.68.109.1433. That's it, okay? The IP address of the server, the port of the, the SQL server that's running on my Docker container. Easy. We'll hit save hostname. That's essentially it on that side of things. Jumping back to our drawing here. So what we've done is we now have this SQL server, it has a host name in Cloudflare, okay? So this whole part here is kind of, is essentially all set up. But what we need to do now is we need to have the part on the client side, so my MacBook, where I'm connecting it to, or whatever you're running, Windows machine or whatever that you're using, uh, we need to make sure we have Cloudflare installed on our machine so we can connect to this tunnel. Uh, so we can then use that service. A link to this will be in the video description. So come down here and then depending on what you're using, if you're using Linux, I've got the binary, the Debian or the RPM packages, which you can download. And then Mac OS, you can just use a brew install to get Cloudflare. Or if you're running Windows, then there's a few ways that you can get it as well. An executable or you can use their package manager, uh, which will give you Cloudflare as well. So I've already got Cloudflare all installed on my Mac. So what we can do now is just jump to my terminal and I'll show you the command that will connect to our SQL service and it essentially binds it to the the local IP address of our Mac of our MacBook or your Windows machine or whatever. And that's what we use to connect to our database. It's <laughs> If that doesn't make sense, that's okay. I'm going to show you. So this is my MacBook now, okay? We're, we're, on, we're on my Mac. This isn't uh, the server or anything like that. Now, if we come back to Cloudflare just really quickly, this was the host name, okay? This is what we need. We need to, so it's techdocssql.alzim.xyz, okay? So this is the command. Once you've got Cloudflare installed, we are running Cloudflare access TCP hostname, right? So we're saying that we want to have a TCP tunnel connecting to TikTok's SQL, alzim.xyz. It's aware of this, it knows what this is. And we're going to map it to my local IP address of my MacBook, binding it on port 9210. Now you can, I can bind this also on, one, uh, on port 1433 on my local machine, it doesn't matter. As long as you're binding it to a port that's not gonna conflict with anything else running on your local machine. Not, your, not the server because it's not worrying about that, just on your local machine, okay? And what I can do is I can hit enter here and now it's going cool. We've set up that listener. If you try to hit this port, you're gonna to have to of course authenticate with the Cloudflare service and then if you authenticate all right, you can connect to your SQL server. Again, if this is a little confusing, that's okay. I'm going to showcase now connecting to it. So this is dBeaver, which is, I guess it's equivalent to SQL Server Management or whatever it is, just being able to, you know, explore and navigate your database. So if I hit the plus button on the top left hand corner, I can choose a database to connect to and I'm going to use SQL Server because that's what I'm running. Now under host, we would put 127.0.0.1. The port is 9210, 9210. The database that I'm going to be connecting to is just the master. It's the only one that I'm really running. And we still need to supply the username and password of our actual database. So mine's pretty much default credentials. So SA for the username. I'll just grab my database password. So I've just pasted in my password here. And now what I can do is I can hit test connection. Okay. And what this text test connection is going to do, it's going to try to use that port. That port is binded to the Cloudflare TCP tunnel, and then it's gonna send that authentication, and then we're gonna be able to connect to it, right? Now, we don't have any single sign-on or anything configured at this stage, okay? What's gonna happen is, 
providing that our database username and password is correct, we can access this. So if I hit test connection, it's going to test it. And you can see there, it's done a connection test and it's seen that it's a Microsoft SQL server. If I hit OK, and then finish, and then double click here, it's gonna to connect to that database. And there we are, we've connected to the database. Now the thing here, okay, that you might be a bit confused about is, well, this was just, we were just able to access this without any sort of additional authentication, okay? This was just us providing that we had the database username and password, we could just access this um, providing that, again, we, we knew the, the domain name that it was hosted on. That's all cool. But how do we actually protect this with the single sign-on with using Cloudflare? How do we get that additional benefit that Zero Trust gives us for free? Let me show you. And again, I covered this in my other video um, on setting up application policies to protect your applications. Um, so that's all covered, but I'm going to cover it again. So we are now in back in Cloudflare. And if we go into applications here and we'll go add an application self-hosted because it's an application that i'm self-hosting we'll put in the application name so let's just do tiktoks sql subdomain which was uh tiktoks sql on the alzim xyz and we can essentially just hit next and we'll give it a policy name so sql TikToks, doesn't matter. Um, that's just the policy name. And then you can see here, I already have a default policy group that I use. And this one here is just configured to use my GitHub. I have a GitHub single sign on all set up. Uh, please watch that other video if you want to just get a better understanding on how you can set up your identity providers. Uh, but I use GitHub for mine. I don't need to set up any additional rules or anything like that because it's all been set up. I can hit next. And then I can hit add application. So now, if I try connect to the database again, it shouldn't let me. It should now prompt me for authentication. So let's stop this. Come back up here. Hit enter on this. Okay. Now let's try connect to the database again. So I've edited the connection. And if I test the connection here, it's going to try connect. And, and then... It's going to bring me to my single sign-on page. Fingers crossed. There we go. So now it's saying, let me zoom in a bit. It's saying you have initiated a request for Cloudflare access authentication using command line tool. Would you like to approve this? I'm going to hit approve. And there we go. A token has been returned to the machine and initiated the request. So since this is already in a web browser that's already authenticated with my GitHub, so if I, I can log into my GitHub now, um, that's why it all automatically authenticated. It didn't ask for credentials because that token is already in play. I want to showcase this as well. So if I click GitHub, I've got a link here. I'll zoom in a bit. So if I click GitHub, I'm already logged in. I just want to showcase this. You can see in the top right hand corner, tech docs, okay? I am logged in. I am logged in, okay? So that, that's why uh, that authentication straight away worked. So coming back to our drawing, right the process is quite simple if you look at it from a high level there's a few in intricate bits in there of a cloudflare and just wrapping your head around with how cloudflare works but if you watch that previous video and follow along with these instructions you should be good so what we've got just to cover it again we've got alzim server which was my server it's running a docker container that's exposing tcp port 1433 that the server itself has a cloudflare tunnel docker container that talks to Cloudflare Zero Trust, okay? So that way it can, I, can, I can set up services in Cloudflare that can talk back to the server and the Docker containers running it. And I can map those two domain names, okay? That's all set up. Now, since we're using TCP, we need to connect to it via a TCP tunnel because we're not using a web browser, right? Via HTTP or HTTPS, we're using TCP. So that's why we have to have the Cloudflare on our client machine as well. When we set up that tunnel, we map it to our MacBook using 127.0.0.1 and the port, and that set up that WebSocket. And then we can use that to authenticate with the service. And if you have single sign-on, then it's going to ask you for the extra credentials. Um, ju not, not just for accessing the database, but also just for accessing the service 
in general. So you've got that extra layer of protection on your service. Right, so that is essentially it. I hope this made sense. Now, if you've got any questions or if you're getting a bit stuck or anything, I have a Discord, right? Uh, I'll have a link to that below and that's open to all of the community. Feel free to join. And then also our members. If you're a member, you'll get one-on-one -on -one support with me uh, and I will definitely sit down and make the time for you um, to help you through any questions that you have relating to any of this stuff. Uh, and I'll get you up and running. Uh, so if you're interested in that, membership, sign up, um, and you'll yeah you'll get those perks. Join the Discord, uh, verify that you are a member, and you got it. One-on-one uh, -on -one support with me, and I will help you out. But yeah, I hope this made sense. Again, any questions, YouTube comments, or Discord, I'll help you out. And yeah, that is essentially it. I know it was a bit, <laughs> there was a bit there to wrap your head around, but I think this is really cool. Uh, and the next video, I'm going to be covering SSH access, uh, which is a, a whole awesome concept in its own as well. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.